Whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. How about it, Walters? Do we uh, understand each other now? We do. We do. You see, Walters, this has been our most expensive payday as yet. Extra money. Extra time. Extra trouble. I've uh, got some very bad news for you, Walters. Bad news? Yes, you see, the people that I work for they want to know what's going on all the time. But you got what you came for. Oh, yes, we always do. But you see, these people that I work for, they don't want any trouble. They don't like mistakes. They never allow more than one mistake. And Walters, you made yours. I understand. Believe me. We'll meet the first of next. Monday, is it? Monday. Your articles are great, but do you realize you're sticking your neck out a mile? Well, somebody's got to stick his neck out. But I need help. I can't do it alone. Merrill, you've been involved in this for, what, three, four months? I've been involved in it for years. Let me tell you one thing. When a thing like this cracks, it cracks wide open. I guess all it takes is one man. Yeah, that's right. A guy with guts. Guts enough to come forward with evidence, something concrete. When this happens, well, you're halfway home. All right, Dan. What do you got for me? The public is my newspaper's responsibility and mine. I'll need all kinds of help, information, names, leads. The kind of stuff you run into. Look, we're all for you. We'll do anything we can for you, but I can't feed you this stuff for two reasons. One, I don't want you killed. Two, your job is news. Ours are solving crimes. Dan, I need your help. All right, all right, you got it, but on my terms. Well, I heard this noise and the fighting, and so naturally the first Yeah, time I know. I... You told us. Now, when you ran out, did you see anything about the car that would help us out? License number? Make the model? Anything like that? Look, I'm no hero. I was scared. You don't remember what to think of when you're scared like that. You know, what to look for. Sure, I understand. Don't leave. I'll take a look around. Okay. You uh, feeling a little better now, Mr. Waters? Yeah, a little better. Sure you want to sit up? Yeah. Well, let's go over this just once more. Now, you say that two men you never saw before came in here, beat you up, helped themselves to most of the cash in the drawer, but not all of it. And then they left. Is that right? That's right, Sergeant. It was just a robbery, pure and simple. No, Mr. Walters, I don't think so. Can I use your phone? Now, look, let's not make a federal case out of this. It was just a robbery. So I got insurance. So this is the chance you take in any business. I don't want any red tape. Forget it. Well, Mr. Walters, all crimes have to be investigated. This is no exception. And we'll try to make it as brief and convenient as we can. But it's our job to look into it. We'll see about getting you to the hospital. I told you that isn't necessary. No. I'm sorry. Give me Highway Patrol headquarters. Oh, this is Sergeant Williams. Can I speak to Dan Matthews? 
Second one is right in here. Matthews. Oh, hello, Ken. What? Looks like it. All right, fine. I'll meet you there in about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. What about it, Dan? What about what? That newsy phone call. Remember, that's my business. I got a big nose. You want to sniff this one out, huh? Got one foot in my car. Okay. It's Walter's Motel. On my terms, though. Come on. Walters gave us a little trouble this morning. He's not the only one that has given us trouble in the last couple of days, Mr. Dagger. Now, who, for instance? Merle Hartman, boy crusading columnist, for instance. Have you had time to read the papers? Merle Hartman. His little crusade is looking for a hero. Walters wanted to be a hero. Tomorrow, somebody else will have the same complex. You obviously wasted your morning, boys. You roughed up the wrong man. The big fish in this case is Merrill Hartman. At the exact time that Daggett's plans were being formulated, the head of the highway patrol was on the way to an often repeated scene, one with which he hoped to make the first dent in the racketeer's armor. Hi, Ken. Hi. What's this? Oh, Mr. Walters, this is Mr. Matthews of the Highway Patrol. How do you do, sir? How are you? Do you mind telling him just what happened? Well, well, I told the sergeant here there was no reason to make such a big deal out of this. Like I said, it was just a case of robbery. Just a case of robbery? Yeah. That makes it a big deal, but we need your cooperation. Did you get a description? No. I didn't notice a thing. It all happened so fast. Now, wait a minute. If you took a beating of going over like this and you didn't notice anything, come on. Who are you fooling? I'm sorry, Mr. Matthews. I can't help you. I don't know. This whole thing just doesn't add up. No identification. A beating like that. Take a look, Ken. Money's still in the register. All right, what about it? You want me to level with you? That's a gross understatement. All right, Mr. Matthews. I understand your position. Now, now you understand mine. I'll try. Sure, we both know what happened here today. If it's going to cost me a few bucks so it don't happen again, I say, okay. I know what I'm talking about. I learned my lesson the hard way. You can't feed this thing. I'm scared, real scared. And this is the way it's got to be. And I'm going to ask you to cooperate with me. Leave me alone. Forget it. Well, this is a dead end like all the others. Make sure he's taken care of. Come on, let's go. Mr. Waters, you sure you want to leave it like this? Hey, Dan. Yeah, what? Boy, he's really scared. You know what? I don't blame him. He's too scared to talk, and that leads us nowhere. Oh, well, somewhere, Dan. I can talk. Read Merle Hartman tomorrow. In fact, I'm going to phone this one in right okay. now. Remember, boys, discretion. Do what must be done. Now, perhaps all Merrill needs is the same as Walter's, perhaps more. That's for you to judge. That's what you're being paid for. He'll be stopped, Mr. Daggett. Whichever way we play it, he'll be stopped. Watch that hedge when you go out. Right, go ahead. In an effort to stem the tide of the now flourishing protection racket, reporter Merrill Hartman lost no time in telephoning in his most important story to date. Anxious to stir up public opinion, Hartman hoped that his editorial of the next morning would act as the catalyst to bring forth one witness with information so desperately needed by the highway patrol.
Hartman, you cut too deep. You're competing. Now, look, we don't like competition. We eliminate it. Simple. Huh? I guess it is. Now, our business is protection. We've been reading up on your stuff, and we don't like what you have to say. So we're going to protect all those newspaper readers by eliminating the source. You can see we're civic-minded, can't you? You understand, genius? Give me a break. Give me a break. Listen, Harden. You're in bigger trouble than you know. Unless we understand each other. Now, do we? We do. We do. Good. You're smarter than you're right. Like our customers, when they make a mistake, we give them another chance. Just once. Now, this is yours. Operator, give me the highway patrol. This is Merrill Hartman. I want to talk to Dan Matthews. Please, urgent. It's Matthews. Hi, Dan. Guess we're sorry he didn't keep his big mouth shut. Merrill Hartman? Well, not exactly sorry. At least we started something. In the right direction, I hope. And Dan, a couple of our boys were just over here. I'm calling from home. I'm not sure I'm going to be as pretty as I used to be. Is it the same treatment that Walter's got? Pull up. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to have a man on you 24 hours a day. Fine. I'm all for it. We've been looking for a lead in the right direction. Oh, by the way, would you like to be that brave witness we've been looking for? Well, I don't know about that brave part, Dan. But you got yourself a witness. Not much to report, except a couple of the best descriptions you've got so far. I'll fill you in later, after I take care of me. But right, make sure you do. Now, look, my man's going to be with you. You won't make a move that we don't know about. Now, look, one more thing. Lay off the expose till we get things set up the way we want it. The story. Look, I said lay off of it. Dan, we're in trouble. It's the roughest one so far. Yeah, what do you mean? At the motel. I phoned it in there. Look, kill it, and kill it fast. No, it's too late. You better get your man over here, and fast. The paper's gone to bed. A 24-hour watch had immediately been put into effect by the Highway Patrol to protect Merrill Hartman. Following police procedure, each shift was instructed to stay in constant contact with headquarters reporting any unusual incident that might appear significant to the patrol's track down of the criminals. Ken, come on in the office. We'll check those mug books again. Right. Say, didn't you want to check with Merrill Hartman right about now? Oh, yeah, thanks. Give me Merrill Hartman, will you? Matthews. Oh, hello, Hartman. How's your head? No worse than the rest of me, but I still think I'm in one piece. You know, that article of yours in the morning paper was great. It should cause something to pop. Now, look, you stay where you are and relax. We got you covered, okay? Fine. I'll be in touch. Hartman, you remember me? 
me you were here yesterday. Who is this? Elliot Walters. I run the motel out on... Oh, yes, Mr. Walters. Uh, I, uh, I read your article in the paper this morning, and it was pretty much of an eye-opener for me. I see things more clearly now, and I'd like to help. Can we talk? Well, Mr. Walters, any information you have is valuable, I'm sure. Well, why don't you call Dan Matthews at Highway Patrol Headquarters? And I don't want to get involved with the police, Mr. Hartman. Believe me, this is something we can discuss personally. Why personally, Mr. Walters? I don't want to discuss it over the phone. I got all the information you need, all of it. I kept records, dates, names. When? When would you like to talk, Mr. Walters? Well, as soon as you can get here. Now, we're going to have to handle this very carefully, very carefully. No one must ever know where you got this. Okay. Trust me, no one will know. Where are you, at the motel? No, I'm over at my brother-in-law's. I think it's better if we talk here. It's more safe. 420 Crestview Drive. How soon can you make it? I'll be there in 15 minutes. Okay. Beautiful, Mr. Walters. Very well done. Now, I've done everything you asked. Now, will you leave me alone? But there's just one problem. I told you I wouldn't talk. Please, I promise. Oh, I believe you. Never a word. And remember, Dan, I promise nobody be with me. If he thinks I'm not playing straight, he won't talk. Okay. You do everything you told Walters you'd do. Now, we'll be watching you from a distance. You'll be covered. Good luck. Thirty-four seventy to headquarters. Headquarters by. Get thirty sixteen. This is thirty sixteen by. Subject about to leave home, unscheduled. Let me have it. He's headed for four twenty Crestview Drive. When you get there, check back. Ten four. Ten four. Ten four. Bingo. We're not going anywhere. Not for a while. We're just going to have a nice talk. You and me. Sort of uh, pass the time. <laughs> at Crestview Drive, at 420 Crestview Drive. Does that ring a bell with you? Well, it's a nice neighborhood, kind of expensive. I uh, guess that's all it means to me. This might lead no place. Run a check on who lives at 420 Crestview Drive. When he finds out, pull a pack and bring it to me. Yeah. now? Extortion racket, wasn't it? Let me see. Daggett, John Daggett. Yeah, we never had enough evidence to make it stick. We opened the investigation about three years ago. Maybe we really got something going for us now. Look, if Daggett's Walter's brother-in-law, I'm Dick Tracy. Come on. Headquarters to 3470. Headquarters to 3470. Headquarters to 3470. Come in, please. 3470. Send the car out there to check right away. Notify all units about Simpson. Check Walter's motel. Looks like we got troubles. So is Merrill. Come on, let's move. Hello there. I'm looking for a Mr. Walters. Mr. Hartman? Yes. Well, you'll find Mr. Walters around in the back, on the patio. I just go around the side of the house. He's expecting you. Thank you. Too bad you're not going to be able to read your paper tomorrow. My obituary? We have a visitor. Just sit quiet. Okay, Daggett, you're in trouble. Not even a hello, Mr. Matthews? This isn't a social call. Williams, you check the inside. My friend and I will go around and check the back if you have no objections. Uh, I most certainly do. You need a warrant. You're welcome to come back when you have one. All right, all right. We'll play it your way, but right now you're going along with us. You're under arrest. Extortion. Well, oh, well, there's no need to get carried away. If you want to search, search. Help yourself. Right, come on, Daggett, let's go. I suppose you realize you're making a complete fool of yourself. That's one of our minor problems. Move.
Daggett has cleared the place of your hero. By the time they get back, we'll be long gone. They won't find anything. They never have. What about my car? They'll check it out. We're taking that on our little trip. Let's go. Close off the north end of Crestview Drive. I don't want to take any chances they might get through. 10-4? 10-4. I don't even know what you're looking for. Uranium. Well, there they come. Your boy didn't waste any time, did he? The man is in custody. Walters is dead. I just got word from his motel. That's the end of the line for you, Daggett. I've been in trouble before, Matthews, and I've always managed to get out, no matter what. You're not a cheap racketeer anymore. You're now involved in a murder. Put him in a car. Well, Merrill? I got a story to write. The final one. I hope it's the final one. I'm glad I'm still able to write it. Yeah, look, I got a tagline for you. Crime doesn't pay? Yeah, that's right. Now, do me a favor. Will you go home and sell your typewriter? Yeah, See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember, if you care to drive, drive with care. This is Roderick Crawford saying... See you next week.